like we say on the budget channel, maybe not this time, should have bought the thing. What's up my friends, welcome back. Today we're going to build a DIY CNC. I'm going to base my DIY CNC design on Absorber of Light's DIY Arduino CNC router cutter welder design. I'll put a link somewhere. Absorber of Light used a boxed in permanently welded design. I'll be using a more bolt together adjustable design. I had to choose a size so I'm going with 600 by 600 working area. I figured 500 square would be enough so I added a bit extra. The most important thing with this type of machinery is that it's accurate and rigid. But because this is being made out of mill steel that is sized by being pushed through rollers we're going to try every trick in the book to make this thing as accurate as possible. As a quick example of accuracy of mill steel, this square tube it's 50.17 on top, 50.02 in the middle, and 50.17 at the bottom. One of the things that saves a lot of time is having square ends and lengths of sides as equal as possible. We will see why later. Pro tip! Hooking a tape over the end of a piece of steel is not going to be accurate enough for this. This measures 748.5 mil. Now let's see what we get when we line it up with an accurate fine line on the tape, like 100 mil. Tapa tapa tapa. It now measures 750 and a quarter mil. Match lengths that is as close as we can get them. Because I don't have a machine build plate, I'm going to have to try to get this thing perfectly square and level in mid-air. I put the seam on the inside of the guide rails, because I figure that's the most inaccurate side, so that no rollers will run on it. Pro tip! To see if a level is reading accurately, you check the bubble, spin it 180 and see if the bubble is in the same place. Example, if the bubble is biased to the right side, when you spin it 180 it should be biased to the right side again by the same amount. Pack the corners until it's level on all four sides. I can see the bubble move with a half mil packer on a 900 millimeter length, so that's the sort of accuracy I'm chasing. Notice how I never spin the level 180 degrees when checking side to side. We need accurate crosshairs in all corners to make the measurements more accurate. Use a locked combination square to transfer the offsets to all four corners. I'm using a blade because it makes thinner and more accurate lines to line up your tape measure to. We check the lengths of our guide rails. Nine hundred and seventy nine point two five mil. This is where grinding pays off because the other side is nine hundred and seventy nine point two five as well. Now we check the width to see how parallel our guide rails are. It's eight hundred and forty eight point eight. The other side looks like 848.75. Now we check the diagonals. One thousand two hundred and eighty nine. The other side one thousand two hundred and eighty nine point two five. The thing with diagonals, you only have to slide the side half the amount of the difference between the diagonals. Like if it's 4 mil out, you slide the side down 2 mil. Here is the fun part because any weld will pull this thing out of shape. If you tack the tube on the inside at the middle, the weld will shrink and it will pull the tube to the left. If you tack the tube on the outside in the middle, that will tend to pull the tube right. 
if you take the tube middle top, it'll tend to roll the tube anti-clockwise. So that makes it the problem of tacking it where it favours us. You can clamp it or change the angle in the opposite direction to account for the pull, but either way you'll have to constantly check it and, and manipulate it in your favour. I tack the middle outside of the long side so when the weld shrinks it'll pull the tube open on the far side making that dimension bigger. I then tack the outside middle of the other corners in an order that will keep the whole thing square. If you find the dimension of one side too short you can peen or centre punch the weld to stretch it out and make it longer. I now tack the top and bottom in quick succession because the bottom tack will turn the thing clockwise and the top one will turn it anti-clockwise. Tacking the inside will permanently set the square and since this diagonal is a little bit shorter I'll tack it on the inside here first and that will pull in the sides and push the corner out making it longer. You might even have to start again and cut the welds out and clamp it to add even more force. Or even add more weld to the short side to force it into square. If I do a long continuous weld here, it'll distort, so it's small tacks again. I'll even brace it to make sure. Flip the frame and tack to counter the first tack. Now double tacks. Just keep repeating. Small tacks so not much heat goes into the job. Flip it to put a tack to oppose the first tack. Let it cool right down and then start again with another set of tacks. Before final welding, one diagonal was a quarter of a mil longer than the other. After fully welding, it's now half a mil. As for sides, I can't see any visual difference in length. And for twist, it doesn't seem to be bent like a potato chip. Now we add some legs and some jacking screw feet so you can level it.